So you have been watching my nature videos and you get yourself out to the forests and parks of Singapore to try to take some photos of all these cool animals, right? But as you're walking along the forest, you realise to yourself, why don't I see any animals, huh? How do people online even find all these animals to begin with? Well, I'm gonna break that down for you in my brand new series. Wow, how you take one now? Uh, you see your camera very good then, that's why. Hey, 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 hey. I can teach you, but can click or not? Hello, so it's a brand new year 2024 uh, and you know what I say right, new year, new me. So on top of my nature videos, I actually want to try something new on this channel, right? And I want to you know, kind of teach you guys some nature photography tips and tricks to basically complement, you know, my said nature videos, right? Because I'm sure many of you have fallen in love with all the plants and animals in Singapore that I've featured, you know, and maybe you guys also want to go out and take photos of all these, you know, animals yourself. So in today's first episode, we're going to talk about the first thing that you need to do even before you whip your camera out, right? And that is to spot the animals to begin with. And I've actually got three tips to help train your eyes with. So usually for my videos, to be honest, they're all planned. Right? And by plan, I don't mean just like, oh, the title or the topic or the upload schedule, but I also mean where to film my videos. So for example, if I want to look for the Grey Crown Crane, which I think it's the most watched video on this channel, I would need to go to a specific location, right? And same goes, right, if I want to look for Kalugos or Barnacles or Crocodiles, specific location. And all of this, you need to do research, right? So for Crocodiles, you obviously go to Sungai Bulo, right? And if you want to go to Kalugos, you need to go for forested areas like Bukit Timah Nature Reserve. But most of the time, okay, if you're not a content creator, maybe you don't want to look for a specific animal, right? Instead, maybe you want to do some like location-based animal spotting instead, correct? So it's the same thing, right? When I make my overnight at Pulau Ubin video or my bird challenge at Bishan Angmakyo Park video, you can still do a lot of research, right? Because online, there are actually lots of resources that help tell you like, okay, at what location you can see what kind of animals. And by doing so, you can actually like preemptively train your brain to know what to look for because when you see that list, you roughly know, okay, this area got birds that look like this or reptiles that look like this. And so, by already knowing how they roughly look like, when you're scanning the area, it's easier for you to spot them because you already roughly know what to expect. So one website or app that you might want to use or try out is the iNaturalist app. Not sponsored, but it's actually a really good app because it is a citizen science platform. And what that means is basically regular people like you and me, we can go and note down and, and report what animal you see and where you see it, right? And they will collate it all in this database. Or you can be like me, you know, I'll usually just Google what animal at blank. And uh, usually a lot of resources will pop up, including iNaturalist, right? But you'll also get info from NParks and blogs and, and things like that. But I do still want to remind all of you, you can go and do your research and you can go and find what sort of animals you can find and what sort of places. But at the end of the day, spotting an animal is still very luck-based, right? Some days you can find something cool, some days not so much. But just remember, that is all part of the fun. And when you do spot something, it is so, so, so rewarding. Okay, so now that you roughly know what sort of animals are at what location, it is game time, right? And really, depending on the type of animal, sometimes you may need to rely on visual cues more, and sometimes you need to listen out for audio cues more, right? But the, the thing that I'm trying to teach you here is that you need to find sensory cues that break the pattern. So let's start with the more straightforward one, right? And that is sound. Now, I know a lot of Singaporeans, they love their birds, right? And naturally, birds make bird calls. And usually the calls are very distinguishable from species to species. But okay, it doesn't matter if you recognize the sounds already or not, right? Because when I say break the pattern, what it simply means is that when you enter a forest, the sounds that you usually hear is like the leaves rustling in the wind or the sound of um, cicadas, right? The, chi -chi -chi, the buzzing of cicadas or, or the army on will say cicada, <laughs> correct or not? But if you actually stay silent, you can every once in a while hear a bird call that sticks out from the things you normally hear, right? And if you hear a bird call, Go follow it. Simple as that. But what if the animal is quiet?
quiet huh? or, or silent. Hmm? And I, I do know I've got some deaf and hard of hearing friends who watch my videos too, right? And in that case, there are also a lot of visual cues that can also break the pattern. And for visual cues, I can actually break it down further into three main points, right? Colours, lines, textures. Now, if an animal that you're looking for is very brightly coloured, then okay lah, lucky you lah, huh? But you know, we all know that a lot of animals do camouflage, right? And what I usually would do first is by looking at the tree and appreciating these three things, right? Again, like I said, colours, lines, textures. And what that means is that every tree or even like the ground, right? They have this sort of natural movement to it, right? The lines would kind of flow in a certain natural way, right? There, is, there are textures that would run throughout, you know, certain portions of, of the tree or the ground. And so when you're looking for an animal, you basically just need to look for any bumps or shapes that breaks away from these shapes, lines, textures, right? Just something that seems a bit off or seems a bit different. Okay, so I love to use snakes as an example for this, right? So if you look over here, this is an oriental whip snake. Now, clearly, as you see over here, the green of the snake is a slightly different green from the leaves that it is on, right? So it's much lighter or it's slightly lighter. Um, and also, if you just look at the natural lines of the leaves, right? It goes down this way. But somehow, there's one line for, I mean, for a lack of a better term, it snakes around the leaves like that instead, right? So again, it breaks away from the pattern. And also the texture, as you can see, let me pause at a much nicer, more HD section. There we go. So you see, the texture is also slightly different. All right, so if we just use another example for this, this is the Shaw Pit Viper. So again, lines usually they will go down this way, just based on the roots, right? Somehow there is one line that is coiling around, correct? And also the brown is clearly also lighter and the texture of the scales is also very different, right? So usually when you're out, you know, in the mangrove forests or just in your regular forest, right? Usually the snakes will be quite far away. So you do need to like really scrutinize what is right in front of you. But if you really like take your time to observe, you can see such things like the lines again, lines, textures and colors that really break away from the pattern. Right? So if it, it's the same for birds as well. So this is your Sunda Pygmy Woodpecker. So this one, okay, clearly it's a very good camouflage, right? So you see, if it doesn't move, let me just find out. Okay, if it doesn't move, wow, perfect. Very hard for you to see. But a lot of birds, they are actually diurnal. So diurnal means they are active in the day. So for such birds, they will move. Lah. So if you look at, I mean, if you look at this, this footage over here, if you see something that is part of the tree, but eh, how come it moves, then the bird is there lah, right? Um, but that is for diurnal birds, right? What if you have nocturnal birds like your deer, oop, like your deer owls? So this one is a spotted wood owl. Okay, so like I said, bumps or, or anything that sticks out that breaks away from the pattern, oh look, it just turned its head. So yes, also it's a very similar looking brown in terms of the, the color of its feathers. But, you know, you do also notice that the textures, right, the line, something is just a little bit off, right? So this is a very close up view. If you are standing from at the bottom of the tree, you might see something like this instead. As you can see over here, the owls are pretty big. You can observe them even from afar, but it really is just a lump that sticks out of, you know, the regular branches. Like, you see the regular branches at the bottom, it's thinner, and then suddenly you have this big chunk over there, which doesn't make sense for a tree, right? Usually it goes thick and then thin. So now you got thick and then thin and then suddenly thick again, right? So that's how you can spot the owls from, you know, at the bottom of the trees, right? So it's gonna turn its head. See, it turned its head over here, and then, yeah lah, there's some tree pruning at the back as well. <laughs> okay. Okay, so same over here, this is a Kalugo, right? So again, what is this lump hanging down at the bottom, right? I don't know what this lump is. Well, it's the Kalugo, right? It is a very good uh, master of camouflage. Uh, but let me find a different footage. So again over here, it is a slightly different color, slightly different texture and goes against the lines, the natural lines of the tree. So these are some of the obvious ones. Sometimes the animal can get really, really tricky. 
right so this one over here is your draco lizard or your flying dragon oh right so you can see they these lizards are very very small and as you can see with this one is the black bearded flying dragon the color of its body and the tree is practically the same so sometimes the color might not be the one that you need to to look out for right sometimes it's really just a line so if you look at this other one over here the tree would go straight up but then suddenly a y got this twig sticking out right so sometimes it might really be twigs but if you really zoom in close you can tell that they are lizards and they do move their head sometimes or you know in the case of the the flying dragon they would uh, spread spread open their wings or their patagium right and then at that point you'll know that you have spotted an animal but for sure all of these take practice right but in general these are the three main things to look out in terms of visual cues right and once you have gotten used to knowing how to identify and, and, and spot these three things you can apply it to any animal at any location now for my last tip it's actually the most simple one but a lot of people forget to do and it's really just to slow it down now it's actually a very common sight for you to see people like speeding through a trail or to talk to their friends or to use their phones right they play and blast loud music right it's very natural humans crave new stimuli but when you do that confirm very hard to find animals right because one part yes you are distracted you're not really observing but the other part is that most animals right they're actually very jittery and timid when it comes to loud noises and sudden movements so i've actually talked about this every once in a while in my videos right and one example that i've given before i think in one of my podcast episodes is the very rare and elusive critically endangered local monkey called the raffles banded langer and even for myself, right, I have never seen the Raffles Banded Langer before because they are very shy creatures, right? And they can actually spot you from afar and they can listen to you from afar and even by the time you walk to them, right, long gone already, bye-bye. And it is the same even for our less elusive animals, right? Like some of your birds huh, or some of your lizards. They see any movement or they hear any sound, ah, run, hide, go hide under the leaf. Huh? And all you're left with, right, are your more daring animals, lah, huh, which are your long-tailed macaques and your, and your minas. Huh? Then most people complain, say, oh yeah, our forest thing got this and that. Huh? But all you really needed to do, right, is to just be calm, walk slowly, walk quietly, and then you'll actually be surprised at what sort of animals you can find. But yeah, that's it. Those are my three main tips for improving your skills in, in spotting animals, right? Again, they are do your research, break the pattern, and to slow it down. And this really marks the end of today's episode already, but there's one tradition that I will bring over to this series as well, and that is to thank my patrons. So before we go, I'll let give a big shout out to our patrons. Mr. Chu, Mr. Chu, Spot Mesh, you know, no, 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 England, Hedge, Queen, Limpets, Muffin, Jets, Pingu, Master, Jablock, Tango, Amal, Delo, Neko, Sama, Uncle Sam, Amelia, Fauzi, Wailer, Now, Crooked Spider, Low Eli, Big Two Circles, Amy, Ooh, Quack Quack, Mama and Momo, Pixel, Ama, Shelby, and Popo Pepper. Thank you so much for supporting this channel directly. And if you would like to do the same, you can find the link to my Patreon down in the description below. And okay, this is a new series, so new series, new ending. And in that sense, uh, all I have to say is that, and okay, let me brainstorm. Uh, Okay, and if you have learned something today, can click the subscribe button or not. Bye-bye.